It's obviously a great pleasure to be able to introduce Ambassador uh, Saud Abayev uh, here at Yale. Uh, in many ways, the ambassador is, uh, his personal life or his professional life exemplifies the history of his country. Um, he started out uh, as a man of high culture uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, highly educated uh, with degrees in Leningrad uh, and in the Central Committee of the Communist Party. Uh, Institute. Uh, he's got a PhD in philosophy from Kazakh State University, as well as a PhD in political science from Moscow State University, um, which is both remarkably impressive. Um, in addition to being a strong man of knowledge and science, he's had an outstanding professional career. Um, he started out in the Soviet Foreign Ministry, um, which, uh, of course, most of you know who have some familiarity with the Soviet Union was the most professional of the Soviet bureaucracies. They were extremely skilled, um, exemplary in all respects. He was the, ambas the last uh, ambassador to Turkey of the Soviet Union. In fact, he was the last ambassador appoint appointed to any post uh, by Mikhail Gorbachev before the breakup of the Soviet Union. And he quickly took on the post as ambassador to Turkey for his new country of Kazakhstan. Um, in the post-Soviet period, uh, he's had a number of high posts within Kazakhstan itself. Uh, he's been the foreign minister of Kazakhstan. Uh, in 1994, uh, he w signed uh, the NATO Partnership for Peace Agreement. And also, and this is equally important, although not included in his uh, English language bio, was responsible for a number of very important agreements that linked up the economies of the former Soviet Union and greatly stabilized the economy of Kazakhstan through the breakup of those countries. So uh, the formation of the customs union, it's really a remarkable career that he's had. In 2000, um, I'm skipping ahead, there's quite a lot here. He's been ambassador in a number of foreign countries. Um, in 2000, he was appointed uh, to the ambassador to the United States, and he served in that post up to the present day, a remarkably long term of tenure in countries that tend to have a high degree of turnover, another reflection of his remarkable abilities. And I'm sure that he's going to provide us with some interesting information today. Uh, and it's with a great pleasure uh, that we welcome such a man of high intellect, high culture, and high professional responsibility to Yale. Uh, I hope you all join me in a round of applause. centuries of history. Four times the size of Texas, Kazakhstan, located on the fabled Silk Road, stretches from the Caspian Sea to China, linking Europe and Asia. The history of the new Kazakhstan started when it became independent on December 16, 1991. In the 15 years since then, Kazakhstan, under the remarkable leadership of President Nursultan Nazarbayev, has turned from one of the worst off fragments of the fallen Soviet empire into an economically strong and dynamically developing democratic country. Through successful market and political reforms, Kazakhstan has become one of the fastest growing economies in the world, a recognized leader in Central Asia, and a respected and reliable partner within the international community. Today, Kazakhstan exports more than a million barrels of oil each day as new giant fields holding reserves of more than 100 billion barrels are developed, Kazakhstan will export more than 3 million barrels daily by 2015, becoming one of the world's leading exporters. Today's Kazakhstan is not only a major oil, industrial, and agricultural economy, it is also a country developing new technologies, which has already sent its first satellite into space. Fifteen years ago, Kazakhstan's future did not look as bright. 
Here, at the Semipalatinsk nuclear test site, Moscow conducted more than 450 nuclear tests during four decades. The tests ruined the lives of more than one and a half million innocent people and irradiated vast areas of once fertile land. In August 1991, President Nazarbayev, relying on popular support while defying threats from the Kremlin, made a courageous decision and shut down the world's second largest test site at Semipalatinsk by presidential decree. After the Soviet Union's collapse, Kazakhstan inherited the world's fourth largest nuclear arsenal. It included 1,400 nuclear warheads and was larger than the arsenals of Great Britain, France, and China combined. Despite urgings from so-called well-wishers from abroad who offered huge financial incentives in return for Kazakhstan's becoming the first Muslim nuclear power, Kazakhstan voluntarily renounced its lethal arsenal. This bold move of President Nazarbayev and his continuing leadership have made an outstanding contribution to global nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. In cooperation with the United States under the Non-Lugar program, Kazakhstan rid itself of all nuclear weapons and their infrastructure. Both the United States Senate and House of Representatives have called Kazakhstan's cooperation with the U.S. in this area a model for such efforts by other countries. I also want to thank you again for the work that we did together uh, and for your decision to decommission Kazakhstan's nuclear arsenal. It may seem, in retrospect, to be an easy decision. At the time, it was not easy, nor was it clear that it was going to happen here and in uh, Belarus, Ukraine, and elsewhere. And your leadership uh, made the world a safer place. And after the recent rise of terrorism, it provided fewer opportunities for terrorists to steal nuclear materials. So I, I thank you. And the last few years have only proved the wisdom of the decision you made in the early 90s. Committed to non-proliferation and global security, and having established peaceful international relations, ensuring favorable conditions for its economic growth, Kazakhstan has proven that it has gained, not lost, from renouncing nuclear weapons. We believe the steps we took in the past decade became yet another considerable contribution to preserving stability and security in the world. Kazakhstan stands by our historic non-nuclear weapons choice and calls on other countries to follow us. Kazakhstan's contribution to building a safer world has not been limited to nuclear disarmament. At the initiative of President Nazarbayev, Kazakhstan created and continues to host the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, a unique regional security organization with 18 member countries, representing a total population of more than 3 billion people, more than half of the world's population, and one-third of the global economy. This grouping brings important contributions to strengthening peace and stability in the world. The late Pope John Paul II called Kazakhstan an example of harmony between different religions and nationalities. Kazakhstan has convened congresses of leaders of world and traditional religions, creating valuable forums for reducing tension and promoting dialogue of civilizations. The development of an independent Kazakhstan is directly linked to the support of the United States of America. I'm proud that when I was president in 1992, the United States became the first country to recognize the independence of Kazakhstan and to establish diplomatic relations with it. The United States supports Kazakhstan's independence and believes that its security is vitally important for stability in Europe and Asia. I well remember the historic occasion in May 1992 when I welcomed President Nazarbayev to the White House, the first ever visit of a head of state from the independent Kazakhstan. The discussions we had that day have led to a deepening of the relations between our two countries. I commend President Nazarbayev for the progress that Kazakhstan has made in its short time as an independent country. During their meeting in 2001, Presidents Nursultan Nazarbayev and George W. Bush announced a strategic partnership between their two nations. 
Since that time, the partnership, encompassing non-proliferation, the war on terrorism, energy, and building democracy in a critical region, has expanded significantly. Kazakhstan has supported the United States and Russia in the global initiative to combat nuclear terrorism. Kazakhstan became one of the very few Muslim-majority countries to send troops to Iraq and remains committed to its obligations in bringing peace to that nation. Kazakhstan and the United States work together to stabilize Afghanistan as they promote the vision of a greater Central Asia. As noted by President George W. Bush, quote, the United States views Kazakhstan as a strategic partner in Central Asia and values your strong support for our efforts to bring democracy to Iraq and Afghanistan. We appreciate the closer cooperation in combating terrorism and want to expand this cooperation. President Bush also noted that the stability and prosperity Kazakhstan enjoys stand as a model for other countries in Central Asia and expressed firm interest in developing cooperation and ensuring peace, stability, and prosperity in this complex region. Kazakhstan and the United States are strong partners, sharing common values of freedom, democracy, and entrepreneurship. Together, the two countries face new challenges and work for peace and prosperity. In the future, this cooperation will only strengthen. Kazakhstan looks forward to the future with optimism, believing its commitment to nuclear disarmament, experience with peaceful coexistence of so many different nationalities and religions, and peaceful international cooperation will continue to build a safer and more prosperous world. Hey, Ambassador Sadovai. My English is not perfect, so I will add through interpreter. Ну, мы сейчас посмотрели небольшой фильм о Казахстане, который, ну, надеюсь, даст вам небольшое представление о реальном Казахстане, а не о том Казахстане, который некоторые черпают из э, фильма Саши Барона. Good afternoon, future American leaders. Um... The ambassador will be speaking through me. Um, you just uh, had a an opportunity to look at uh, to watch the a short uh, DVD on Kazakhstan, which I hope uh, give you some ideas about what the real Kazakhstan is about, and not the uh, misconceptions uh, provided in some in the movie by Sasha Baron Cohen. Но тем не менее, я думаю, что этот фильм сделал определенную положительную работу после его выхода на широкий экран появился большой интерес к Казахстану многие люди захотели узнать и познакомиться с настоящим Казахстаном But still, um, speaking of the movie if we can put this uh, subject to rest um, it did provide some positive benefits for Kazakhstan in that it made some people willing to learn more about Kazakhstan, about the real country. Хочу сказать, что Казахстан ну, на карте мира появился как независимое государство совсем недавно, всего лишь 15 лет назад. I'd like to say that Kazakhstan, as an independent nation, as an independent nation, appeared on the map of the world uh, very recently, only 15 years ago. 15 лет назад Казахстан был не самой uh, преуспевающей союзной республикой. В день независимости мы получили очень тяжелое наследство от бывшего Советского Союза. 
было очень-очень-очень много причин и опасностей, чтобы мы состоялись как подлинно суверенное и независимое государство. When Kazakhstan became independent in December 1991, there were many reasons um, for why Kazakhstan would fail and would not succeed as, a, as an independent nation at all, including the very heavy legacy left by the <coughs> former Soviet Union. Прежде всего, я хочу сказать, что республика была многонациональной, и в Казахстане, собственно, казахи составляли меньшинство населения в 91 году. Хотя по переписи 1998 года 98% населения Казахстана были казахами. To begin with, Kazakhstan was an, a multi-ethnic country where the ethnic Kazakhs themselves were in a minority, even though in the uh, census of 1908, uh, Kazakhstan, the Kazakhs were the Kazakhs constituted 98% of the population. Ну, это стало вот результатом последовательно такой, я бы сказал бы, политики до того, значит, царской России, а после революции 17 -го года коммунистического, коммунистического Кремля Советского Союза. And such a, an ethnic diversity became actually the result of uh, uh, dis distinctive policies uh, pursued vis-a-vis -vis Kazakhstan by first the Tsarist Russia and then the Communist Kremlin. Two times uh, Kazakhstan was uh, struck by famine in 1921 through 1923, and then in 1929 through 1932. The first instance was caused by the civil war, and the second was uh, by the Collectivization, forced collectivization, and that led to the death or outward migration of half of ethnic Kazakhs. Так что в прошлом веке Казахстан, можно сказать, пережил Холокост дважды. So one can say that uh, last century Kazakhstan experienced a Holocaust of sorts in its own right twice. Второе это была очень Отсталая экономика страны, которую мы получили в 91 году, которая еще усугублялась присутствием большого военно-промышленного комплекса. И фактически 93% экономики Казахстана управлялась из Москвы. The second major reason for why Kazakhstan should have failed was the backward nature of the economy and the presence of uh, many enterprises of the Soviet military and industrial complex, basically 90, more than 90% of Kazakhstan's economy uh, were uh, directed and managed out of Moscow from beyond Kazakhstan's borders. На территории Казахстана находился второй ядерный, крупнейший ядерный полигон в мире после Невады в Семипалатинске на котором в течение 40 лет было испытано более 500 атомных и термоядерных бомб. For, uh, for more than 40 years, Kazakhstan was home to the world's second largest nuclear test site, second to the Nevada test site here in the United States, where the Soviet Union conducted uh, almost 500 nuclear tests in the 40 years of its existence в результате которых погиб, пострадало более полутора миллионов казахстанцев, ни в чем не повинных людей. And that again made uh, more than 1.5 million people in Kazakhstan, innocent people in Kazakhstan, suffer for, for no good reason. Я был на Невадском полигоне, я разговаривал с людьми, которые там работали и работают. Если Соединенные правительства Соединенных Штатов Америки Наши 
наши граждане были в биологической части эксперимента. Они даже не знали о том, что будет взрыв. Они никогда не знали, какие будут последствия. Все это было посекречено, и никто не был озабочен возможной угрозой для жизни и здоровья людей. I, I did visit the Nevada test site, and I did meet with the people who used to work there. And I know that the U.S. government took efforts to protect the, popul the civil population, the civilian population. This was unfortunately not the case in, in Kazakhstan, uh, where the locals were basically... Part of the experiment, and who then suffered uh, enormous loss to their health and lives, after the, uh, because of the test site, because of the tests. И как я вам сказал, что накануне независимости в Казахстане казахов было меньше, в меньшинстве, чем других национальностей. А в целом в Казахстане проживало и сегодня проживают представители более 100 национальностей и 40 конфессий. And as I said in the beginning, uh, the ethnic Kazakhs were in a minority at the time of independence, and but overall they were and they still are uh, more than 100 ethnic groups and 40 different religions represented in Kazakhstan. And I can tell you that on this was the background against which uh, all kind of uh, gloomy and doomy uh, predictions were made about the future of, the, of such a complex country. And the bottom line of those predictions were that Kazakhstan would not survive as a, as a state in its own right, and it would be torn apart either by interethnic conflicts or by uh, outside interference, and uh, some of the territory would Kazakh would be lost to Russia or some or to some other countries. В числе таких, значит, прогнозистов были и уважаемые американские эксперты. And there were respected American experts who were also uh, singing the same song. И вот я об этом сказал, чтобы вы знали, откуда Казахстан вышел. У нас были, по сравнению с любой другой республикой бывшего Советского Союза, самые сложные объективные условия для развития и трансформации в независимое государство. And I told you all that so that you know where Kazakhstan is coming from and to tell, to give you the understanding that um, Kazakhstan of all other former Soviet republics had perhaps the most difficult situation on its hands. И вот по истечению 15 лет мы с гордостью говорим, что под выдающимся лидерством нашего первого президента Нурсултана Назарбаева, Казахстан состоялся и есть сегодня экономическое сильное, динамично развивающее демократическое государство, признанный лидер Центральной Азии, ответственный и уважаемый партнер международного сообщества. We are proud to say that under the outstanding leadership of President Nursultan Nazarbayev, Kazakhstan survived and became a, a, a state in its own right and became an economically strong and uh, dynamically developing democratic country, a recognized leader in the region, and a reliable a partner of the international community. Последние восемь лет наша экономика является самой динамично развивающей экономикой мира. Мы практически ежегодно даем 10-11 процентов прироста. For the past eight years, Kazakhstan has been one of the most dynamic economies in the world, and our annual growth ranges about 10-11 percent annually for the past nine, eight years. Сегодня наш внутренний валовый продукт составляет в два раза превышает ВВП стран Центральной Азии и Кавказа. Today, Kazakhstan's gross domestic product is twice as large as the economies of 
other countries in Central Asia and even countries in Caucasus combined? Мы раньше всех и эффективнее всех провели рыночные преобразования в стране. Все закончили реформы в первые пять-семь лет. We introduced the market reforms, uh, market reforms the fastest of all other countries, and we we have we were done with them maybe five or seven years after our independence. Но прежде всего мы смогли, в отличие от многих бывших республик Советского Союза, сохранить в нашей многонациональной стране мир, социальное и межнациональное согласие. But the most important result is that we were able to preserve peace and harmony in our very diverse and multi-ethnic society, as opposed to many, many other former Soviet republics which saw bloodshed based on those reasons. Второе, что мы сделали, то мы освободились от четвертого ядерного потенциала в мире. Мы после развала Советского Союза, Украина, Беларусь и Казахстан стали обладателями очень серьезных очень серьезного ядерного оружия. The no. second contribution Kazakhstan has made is um, in renouncing the world's fourth largest nuclear arsenal. As you know, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the nuclear weapons were left in uh, Kazakhstan, Belarus and Ukraine. В отличие, ну, Россия стала преемником Советского Союза, стала ядерной державой. And of Относительно Украины и Беларуси там проблем не было. Эти были ну, европейские э, и христианские страны. Там, значит, да, предопределено было, что их ядерный потенциал уйдет в Россию. And of course, Russia became the legal successor to the, United, to the uh, Soviet Union and inherited the nuclear weapons. But um, as far as Ukraine and Belarus were concerned, there were no major questions about which way they would go in terms of their nuclear weapons. They were European nations, uh, mostly Christian countries, and uh, there was little question that uh, the nuclear weapons from them will be returned to Russia. No, Kazakhstan was a special country. It was a country с преимуществом мусульманским населением. И к нам очень много в то время приезжало разного рода эмиссаров, которые говорили президенту, что оставьте ядерное оружие у себя, вы будете единственной мусульманской страной, ядерной державой, вас будут уважать, уважать с вами будут считаться в этом мире. But Kazakhstan was special in that sense. It was and is a predominantly Muslim nation. And in the early days of our independence, uh, we had no short shortage of foreign emissaries who came to Kazakhstan and urged the president to keep the nuclear weapons, telling him that you will be respected in the world and you will be feared in the world. So you should, and you will be the, f the first, the world's first Muslim nation with the nuclear weapons at that time. Я вспоминаю в начале, э, в конце 91-го, начале 92 -го года, я впервые увидел этот Боинг 747 в Алматинском аэропорту, на котором прилетел один из таких эмиссаров, и он говорил, что оставьте ядерное оружие, мы вот такой Боинг полный, говорит, долларов привезем, все решим ваши экономические проблемы. And I am uh, reminded always of the first time I saw a Boeing 747 uh, in my life, and that was in the Almaty airport um, at the end of 1991 or early 1992, when one of those emissaries arrived on such a plane, and his argument was, uh, if you keep the weapons, you'll get this uh, Boeing load of uh, dollars, which will help solve all of your uh, problems with uh, keeping the weapons. Надо справедливости ради сказать, что и подавляющее большинство элиты, политической элиты того времени в Казахстане тоже было за то, чтобы мы оставили ядерное оружие у себя и тем самым э, унижены многие века оскорбленный Казахстан в одночасье становился ядерной державой, был бы узнаваем, уважаем в мире. To be fair, the majority of the elite in Kazakhstan at that time was also, were also in favor of keeping the nuclear weapons, which they saw as the opportunity to take revenge for 
all those centuries and decades of uh, repressions and persecutions, and uh, which they saw as an opportunity to become a nuclear power overnight and a recognized, a respected and uh, fearful country on the international arena. И здесь я хочу сказать, что большое мужество и мудрость проявил лично президент нашей страны Нурсултан Назарбаев, который принял в то время практически личное решение и убедил в этом народ отказаться от этого ядерного оружия. И последние вот эти 15 лет нашего развития показали, что это был единственно правильный выбор. So, and on this note, I should say that it is the wisdom and the courage of our president, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, that uh, made it possible for him to make this choice, uh, the non-nuclear choice, and he was able to convince the elites and the people that it is the right choice to renounce the nuclear weapons. And the 15 years since then have only proven the, that this choice was a correct one. И я думаю, что именно вот этот шаг Назарбаева предопределил наши отношения с Соединенными Штатами, которые вот за эти 15 лет, практически начавшись с нуля, сегодня характеризуются как стратегическое партнерство. And I believe that um, it is this decision by President Nazarbayev which um, set the tone for the relations between Kazakhstan and the the United States, which uh, have begun from scratch and now have grown into a relationship of strategic partnership. And действительно, это реальное стратегическое партнерство. Действительно, Казахстан и США сегодня очень твердые союзники и надежные партнеры. Мы прошли большой плодотворный путь сотрудничества во многих сферах. Вот я сказал, в сфере обеспечения глобальной безопасности, противостояния распространению ядерного оружия по миру. Я хочу сказать, что Соединенные Штаты Америки занимают очень сильные позиции в разработке энергетических ресурсов Казахстана. А Казахстан, я хочу сказать, что обладает вторыми в мире запасами углеводородного сырья, обладает третью мирового урана и во всем этом участвует в разработке участвуют американские компании. And I'd like to say that this uh, relations is indeed one of strategic partnership. The countries, our two countries, are firm allies and partners in many issues. First, as I described, is was our cooperation. First and foremost, was our cooperation in ensuring. Uh, global security and dismantling Kazakhstan's nuclear arsenal together. Secondly, we are jointly standing against the proliferation of such weapons in the world and cooperating actively uh, still to this day. Uh, thirdly, uh, the United States is a uh, major uh, investor in Kazakhstan and it is um, uh, the US companies are present in Kazakhstan uh, very solidly. Uh, Kazakhstan is estimated to hold the world's second largest oil reserves by different accounts. And Kazakhstan has the uh, one third of the world's uranium reserves. And in all those areas, uh, we have the very strong cooperation going with the United States and US government and private businesses are involved. Очень важное участие Соединенных Штатов в становлении Казахстана как демократической страны. С первых дней нашей независимости мы вместе работаем и в этой сфере. Сегодня развитие либерализации казахстанского общества также является лидирующим в нашем регионе. Я вам скажу, мы, начав практически с нуля сегодня, имеем реально независимую свободную прессу. У нас в Казахстане работает более 2000 э, средств массовой информации. Из них более 85% это э, частные СМИ, независимые СМИ. Работает более 5000 неправительственных организаций, начиная значит, от экологических, заканчивая пацифистскими. 
многопартийная система реально действующая, 11 партий, из которых 4 представлены в парламенте. Но поскольку демократия – это идеал, за которым надо всегда стремиться, и предела совершенства нету, мы продолжаем работать по дальнейшему углублению демократического реформирования нашей страны. Вот буквально до вчера состоялось заседание Государственной комиссии по демократизации общества под председательством президента нашей страны выработаны этой комиссии в течение года рекомендации сегодня переходят в стадию реализации создана рабочая группа по внесению изменений в конституцию направленных на дальнейшее демократическое реформирование Казахстана. Um, of course... One of the most important areas of our relationship since the very beginning has been um, building democracy in Kazakhstan, and the United States is a very strong partner in that area, and we have uh, engaged in a very vigorous dialogue and cooperation on that score as well. And, and the results are there to see as well. Kazakhstan leads the way in the region in terms of reforms. Uh, we have now... Uh, Uh, more than 2,000 independent news media outlets, whereas uh, 15 years ago there was almost none. Uh, we have 5,000 uh, non-governmental organizations uh, dealing with all the issues you can imagine, uh, one can imagine, uh, from the environment protection to the uh, uh, to peacekeeping and uh, promoting peace and uh, uh, peaceful resolution of conflicts. We have uh, 11 political parties in the country, of which four have seats in the national parliament. And of course, democracy is um, an ideal to which one has to continuously strive for and struggle for. Uh, and we intend to continue democratic reforms in Kazakhstan. We understand we have some ways to go. Um, just yesterday, the a special uh, state commission on democratization had a session in uh, Kazakhstan uh, where the president outlined the new plans for the uh, for democratic reforms based on the results of uh, that commission's work during the past year so now those recommendations including ones that will require changes into the constitution which uh, now they are going into the stage of implementation and a special working group was established to put them to prepare those changes into the uh, constitution and offer them to the people сегодня эксперты и политологи занимающиеся нашим регионом в целом и в частности казахстаном говорят о казахстанском пути развития я бы хотел сказать вам, что это такое казахстанский путь развития? Today, experts in uh, political science, uh, majors internationally, uh, talk of Kazakhstan and talk of uh, Kazakhstan's way of development. And I, can, I would like to uh, spend a minute or two ex explaining what they mean by this. Значит, э, Казахстан с первого дня обретения независимости развивал опережающими темпами делал экономические реформы, реформировал базис, я бы так сказал. Since the first days of, of its independence, Kazakhstan has uh, pursued economic and market reforms uh, much more strongly and vigorously than uh, political reforms. Но эти реформы последовательно подкреплялись политической либерализацией общества. But those economic reforms were continuously and consistently supported and followed by those political reforms. Потому что перед нами был печальный пример реформ в Советском Союзе. Когда Горбачев, объявив о политической либерализации общества, совершенно забросил экономику. И разрыв вот, э, между скорость, динамика и глубиной политических реформ и застоем в экономике привел к коллапсу великой державы. And we pursued those policies for for a reason. We had a, a very 
a powerful example in the Soviet Union, which collapsed because uh, uh, Gorbachev pursued very actively li political liberalization w while neglecting and failing to do anything about economic reforms. And um, it was this discrepancy between the speed and the depths of political liberalization in the Soviet Union and the stagnation in the economy which uh, tore apart the Soviet Union. Поэтому мы шли вот именно вот определили для себя такой путь энергичные кардинальные экономические реформы последовательно постепенно подкрепляемые демократическими реформами. So that's why we chose that path we followed uh, pursuing energetic vigorous economic reforms followed by pol political reforms. И мы шли все эти годы эволюционным путем. Мы видим, что на э, территории бывшего Советского Союза новые независимые государства развиваются по двум направлениям. А – это полный застой, полное отставание, полная консервация развития общества. Mm -hmm. um. And we have continuously pursued those policies uh, along the evolutionary uh, type of development. We are seeing that in the former Soviet Union, the newly independent states have developed along t two different uh, ways. A means a complete lack of reforms, a complete lack of change, and complete stagnation and preservation of uh, whatever existed there before. Второе – это насильственное ускорение, искусственное ускорение реформ, как это произошло в Грузии и на Украине. And B is a forceful and sort of artificial, artificial uh, jump starting on the reforms, which uh, we all saw in Georgia and Ukraine through those revolutions. Как показывают тот итоги развития uh, после оранжевых революций, да, и Киргизия. В этих трех странах это тоже не очень успешный путь. Искусственно подстегивать, не обращая э, внимания на объективное состояние общества, такие процессы. And of course there was another revolution in Kyrgyzstan. But uh, as we see now, the results of those revolutions, they um, are not particularly encouraging. And um, they again uh, um, failed to resolve the um, fundamental issues in the societies, and uh, uh, they were there, again, they were made without the resolution of those um, um, underlying economic uh, problems, mostly. Поэтому я думаю, вот изучение вот этого пути изучения этих процессов развития новых независимых государств с одной стороны вот так называемый казахстанский путь о котором я сказал и вот эти два других э, пути развития или не развития новых независимых государств я думаю это очень э, интересная и перспективная тема вот для возможных ваших научных программ тем более я так понимаю что ель это реальная заслуженная кузница американских лидеров. Я думаю, что вот эти процессы, если бы изучались бы системно, глубже, мы могли бы в перспективе принимать очень правильные и точные решения относительно таких процессов в различных странах. So you will see, uh, the three different ways of development in the former Soviet Union. One way of uh, almost no development, the forceful uh, speeding up of those reforms through revolutions, and the Kazakh, the evolutionary way of development. And I believe it may be an interesting subject for s scholarly research at Yale, uh, especially since this is the laboratory of uh, future leaders of the United States, and it will be helpful if um, such a research conducted and uh, the leaders of this country have a uh, better grasp of the intricacies and uh, uh, 
processes of development of other countries. Успех Казахстана важен не только для Казахстана, он важен и для выполнения той, я бы сказал, бы вечной повестки дня, которая стоит перед Соединенными Штатами. Это продвижение свобод и демократии в мире. Успех Казахстана – это наглядный пример, что демократия и успешная рыночная экономика совместимы и возможны и в мусульманской стране, которой фактически является Казахстан. And another important uh, uh, reason for why it deserves uh, more research is that uh, Kazakhstan's success is not just uh, the success of Kazakhstan. It is also important for the United States as it pursues what I can call the sort of eternal agenda of promoting freedom and democracy in the world under its historic mission. And um, Kazakhstan's, Kazakhstan is an example that democracy and market, um, successful market can uh, uh, coexist in a Muslim society, in a Muslim country, which is, uh, which is what Kazakhstan is. Мы вот за 15 лет, я хочу сказать, мы создали фундамент независимого государства. Но перед нами, как и в целом перед регионом, стоят очень сложные вызовы на которые мы должны найти достойные ответы. We believe that in those 15 years of our independence we just laid the foundation for our future development, but we still face uh, major challenges both domestically and in the region. Прежде всего, из внутренних вызовов это не заболеть голландской болезнью, не стать сырьевым придатком развитых государств. On the domestic front, the biggest challenge is to avoid the so-called Dutch disease and to prevent Kazakhstan from becoming a raw materials um, appendix or annex to developed nations. And thank God we are finding uh, answers to those uh, and the ways to answer those challenges. Three года назад у нас была принята стратегическая программа инновационно-индустриального развития, которую мы удачно реализуем. Цель этой программы – диверсифицировать нашу экономику и уйти от зависимости от нефтегазового сектора. We recognize this um, challenge and we have pursued um, measures to tackle this challenge. Three years ago, we, imp we started implementing an ambitious strategy of uh, industrial and innovation, innovative development, whose goal is to diversify Kazakhstan's economy away from uh, the dependence on oil and gas. And we are developing those uh, different uh, industries, uh, such as transportation and communications, biotechnologies. We will be developing peaceful atomic energy, and we are spending considerable amounts on uh, developing healthcare and education. Мы постепенно вот эти годы снижали поступление нефтяных денег в бюджет, учились жить без таких средств и с 1 января этого года ни один доллар из заработ на нефти не входит в бюджет мы живем без нефтяных денег с 1 января этого года они накапливаются в национальном фонде который является фондом будущих поколений for several years we have um, uh, continuously removed the oil revenues we were receiving from our oil and gas industries into and put them away into a national fund of future generations and as of uh, January 1st this year we are living completely without dependence on those oil money which in their entirety are uh, diverted to this national fund for future generations и не случайно мы сейчас приняли программу вхождения Казахстан в ближайшие годы 
в число наиболее конкурентоспособных стран мира. Очень активно сейчас над этим работаем. It then came as no coincidence that Kazakhstan unveiled a program to uh, become one of the world's 50 most competitive nations. We are working hard on to achieve that goal now. Проходит 70% наркотиков в Европу проходит через Казахстан, к сожалению. Идет Афганистан, Таджикистан, Узбекистан, Казахстан, дальше в Россию, через Россию в Европу. Of the external challenges, I would mention uh, first the uh, threat of Islamic extremism, uh, Islamist extremism in uh, Central Asia. As you know, we are not far from Afghanistan, we have only one country between us and Afghanistan, and also the drug trafficking coming out of Afghanistan, uh, more than 70% of uh, opium and heroin coming out of uh, Afghanistan going to Europe passes through Kazakhstan, so Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, then Kazakhstan, then through Russia, and then on to Europe. И, конечно, мы продолжаем дальше мы с Соединенными Штатами работать в сфере нераспространения. Потому что это сегодня очень острая угроза. Не дай бог, если такие элементы попадут в руки террористов. And of course, we are continuing to work closely with the United States and others to um, prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and their components. Uh, God forbid, uh, such weapons or components uh, uh, found their way found their way into the hands of uh, terrorists. Поэтому Наши шаги после трагических событий 11 сентября 2001 года, когда мы, президент объявил о том, что Казахстан, безусловно, будет поддерживать Соединенные Штаты Америки в их борьбе с международным терроризмом и дальше наше участие в Афганистане. Сегодня участие воинского контингента из Казахстана Это единственный контингент из нашего региона. Он продолжает сегодня там оставаться. Уже имени разминировано более 4 миллионов взрывных устройств. Это наши естественные и объективные решения. And coming from those um, understandings, Kazakhstan uh, took the steps immediately after the tragic events of 9-11 to support the United States in the war on terrorism. Our president came out with a statement right away uh, pledging the unconditional support for the United States. We have uh, since stood by these uh, commitments, providing support on Afghanistan, and then becoming the um, only country in Central Asia and one of the very few Muslim-majority countries to send troops to Iraq. We still have troops in Iraq our contingent, however small, uh, continues to serve uh, with distinction. They have destroyed more than four million pieces of deadly ordnance there, and they, we are committed to keeping them there as long as it is needed. And um, those decisions to support the U.S. in the war on terrorism and to send troops to Afghanistan were our natural and um, ob objective uh, decisions based on our convictions. Хочу сказать, что фундамент независимого Казахстана построило мое поколение, которое вышло из Советского Союза. У нас, конечно, мы каждый день себя ломали, каждый день себя обновляли и строили новую страну во главе с нашим первым президентом. What I would like to also say is that the foundation for Kazakhstan's independence, which we have now laid, was basically laid by my generation, by the people who have come out from the Soviet Union, who have uh, had to struggle daily to share their old habits, to change their ways, and to adopt new uh, life. Поэтому сегодня главная задача нашего поколения оставить, передать сильный и независимый Казахстан в надежные руки. Его будущее в надежные руки.
So that is why our goal today is to pass along uh, the, um, the country as we have it uh, to a younger generation, which will be Поэтому не случайно вот более десяти лет в Казахстане действует программа Болашак, согласно которой по, э, президент за счет государства направляет ежегодно в лучшие учебные заведения мира наших молодых людей. So that is why we have the presidential Bolashak, which means the future uh, scholarship program, under which Kazakhstan sends uh, its best and brightest to the uh, best <coughs> universities in the world uh, for studies, all expenses paid. Если до нынешнего года это было ежегодно 100 человек, а с нынешнего года мы направляем 3000 человек за счет средств республики. Up until uh, last year we were sending about 100 uh, students abroad annually, but as of last year we are sending 3000 students under such scholarship. надо сказать, что обучаются в американских вузах, это вы, они Это Джорджтаун, это Гарвард, это Колумбийский университет, Массачусетс технологический университет. Некоторые ваш университет закончили. Они уже занимают важные позиции в правительстве, в экономике, в бизнесе страны. Um, the majority of those students go to, to the United States. And they go to Georgetown or George Washington, Harvard, uh, MIT, and to Yale. And coming back, they uh, are assuming leadership positions in both the government and in the private sector. Думаю, что для нас важно не только то, что они получают какой-то минимум или максимум знаний, информации, специальность, профессию, но важно то, что они впитывают в себя принципы демократии, рынка, что называется, да, получают их от первоисточников от носителей, им не придется каждый раз бороться с собой, как мы это делали. What is especially important about those youngsters is that uh, they don't just uh, get the best education there is from the best professors there are, but uh, they are getting steeped in uh, the traditions of democracy and uh, in the principles of market economy, and they getting them directly from the people who have uh, grown up with them, and that is the uh, important thing that they bring those back to Kazakhstan and they don't have to uh, wean themselves away from the old habits of the Soviet Union. And as they become and assume those positions, they become a, an important link uh, between Kazakhstan and the international community. Поэтому я себя для себя считаю большой привилегией, высокой честью сегодня выступать вашим замечательным, авторитетным и уважаемым учебным заведением, которое является признанной кузницей лидеров Соединенных Штатов Америки. У меня есть и личностный аспект, что я вот вручал свои верительные грамоты вашему выпускнику, 43-м президенту США Джорджу Бушу. И вот so that is why I feel especially honored and privileged to be able to address uh, you today at Yale, one of the world's most respected and authoritative universities. And I have a personal story to tell as well. I presented my credentials as the ambassador for, from Kazakhstan six years ago uh, last week to a Yaley, uh, to Bush, uh, President Bush, uh, George W. Bush. And since that time, we have been working very well together. Для меня особенно приятно, что вот студенты вашего университета проявили такой личностный интерес, инициативу поближе узнать и понять мою страну. И в это лето хотят поехать к нам. Мы это только приветствуем. And I'm especially pleased and excited to hear the, about the initiative of the students from your university who would uh, organize the summer in Kazakhstan program this summer. We, are, we can only welcome this. And today we had a good meeting with the Vice President of your university, 
С ее стороны было высказано встречное желание увеличить количество казахстанцев, обучающихся в Еле. Она даже сделала нам упрек, что что-то мы все вокруг Вашингтона. -то. Можно и в глубинку поехать. And today I had a meeting with um, Vice President Linda Lorimer, who um, also expressed the interest in seeing more Kazakh students come over here. And she even reprimanded us for having centered too much on Washington area uh, universities and uh, saying we should go out more into the country. Видеофильм, и, может быть, вам Казахстан стал чуть-чуть понятнее, чуть-чуть ближе. And I would like to thank you for your patience, for your time that you uh, has, have given me. I'm also thankful that you had the opportunity to, to watch this, um, to, uh, to watch this uh, DVD, and, I hopeful, and I'm hopeful that in the end, Kazakhstan became a, a better understood place for you at the end. Мое некраткое общение с вашими студентами еще раз в силе у меня уверенность, что будущее Америки в надежных руках. In my uh, rather uh, short uh, intercourses, uh, well rather communications and conversations with your students uh, have again uh, proven to me that uh, the United States is in uh, good hands and will be in good hands. Спасибо вам и успехов. Thank you and good luck. Если есть у вас вопросы, я, пожалуйста, готов ответить. Но только не о Борате. But anything not related to Borat. Да, конечно. Perhaps in English is better for everybody to understand. Что происходит насчет религиозной интеграции и видите ли вы в сегодняшнем мире движения, тренды, особенно в религиозном пространстве и какая роль Казахстана? Это первый вопрос. Второй немножко более спорный. Насчет сегодняшней дебаты однополярного и многополярного мира, как бы вы сформулировали вашу позицию? So two questions. The first one is about the sort of uh, value integration in the sort of global world, and particularly in the religious integration or religion, and the sort of position of Kazakhstan on uh, not only geographical position, but also the sort of multicultural position. What are the trends and where do we see this value conversion? And the second question about the today's discussion on the unipolar, unipolar world versus other models. And where do we stand on, on this conversation? That, those are the two questions. Я думаю, вот ответы на эти вопросы, на каждый ответ мог бы отдельной лекцией быть. Well, I think the answers to those questions uh, merit uh, a lecture, every one of them in its own right. Поэтому я постараюсь вот коротенько. Первый вопрос: мы находимся в уникальном геополитическом положении. Значит. Как сказал один э, мудрый израильский политик, каждое утро, вставая, просыпаясь, казахстанец одним глазом видит русского медведя, вторым глазом китайского дракона. А южном подбрусье Казахстана я сказал. But I would like to um, be uh, short and uh, provide the short answers. Um, um... Kazakhstan is indeed in a very unique geographic and geopolitical uh, position. Uh, as one uh, wise Israeli politician told us, Kazakhstan is in a situation where it has to wake up every morning having one eye fixed on uh, the Russian bear to the north and another one fixed on the Chinese dragon to the east. And I talked already about the uh, southern neighbors of Kazakhstan and the challenges we face from there. Вот это вот относительно положения. Относительно религии, я уже сказал, мы многоконфессиальная страна, и основа нашего благополучия – это 
мир и согласие между представителями разных национальностей и религий. Папа, Папа Римский, посетив Казахстан в 2001 году, назвал эту страну примером гармонии между мужчинами и женщинами, представителями различных национальностей и религий. Это для нас очень высокая оценка, мы гордимся и будем это сохранять такой мир. As far as the religious uh, integration and religious um, values in the world are concerned, we, as I said, Kazakhstan is a multi-ethnic country. We have um, made a specific effort to preserve this peace among ethnicities and religions. Um, we were uh, obviously thrilled and pleased by the words of the late Pope John Paul II when he visited Kazakhstan in 2001 calling us an example of harmony between men and women of different origins and beliefs. So we intend to pursue the same policies to promote tolerance and understanding. Что касается однополярности или многополярности сегодняшнего мира, на этот вопрос каждый отвечает по-своему. Каждый видит то, что он хочет видеть в этом мире. As far as the uh, debates about the unipolar or multipolar world, uh, Today, um, I think everybody, every single person will have his own ideas about this, and um, everybody sees what he or she wants to see. Пожалуйста. Please. Yeah, sure. <coughs> Hi. Could you talk a little bit about um, the relationship between Kazakhstan and Russia and um, whether that relationship is weakened by the fact that you're allying yourself more with Western powers and with um, so the, the notion of democracy and um, Western ideas? Thanks. Не могли бы вы сказать о отношениях Казахстана с Россией и не ослабляются ли эти отношения тем, что Казахстан, как вы говорите, uh, все больше ассоциируется с Западом и ассоциирует себя с Западом mm -hmm. и более того продвигает демократические ценности. Я думаю, каждая страна в своем развитии преследует прежде всего свои собственные национальные интересы. Well, Мы that... живем, работаем, развиваемся для того, чтобы кому-то понравиться или не понравиться. I believe that every country, as it develops, uh, pursues its own na national interests first of all, and uh, it develops with with a view towards ensuring those and interests, and not in order to uh, be liked by some other country. Russia, our great neighbor and partner, we are obliged to live together with this country, and we are interested in Russia, strong. И по-настоящему демократической. Russia is our great neighbor and partner. We are destined to live together with Russia, and we are interested in seeing a strong Russia and a democratic Russia. Я думаю, Россия заинтересована в таком же Казахстане. And I believe that Russia is uh, looking to Kazakhstan to develop along the same lines. Please, sir. What specific targets you have towards reaching your democratic goals? Вы сказали, что вам еще предстоит работать над построением демократических институтов демократии в Казахстане. Вы не могли бы конкретно определить, какие цели и задачи вы себе ставите в этом отношении? Я хотел сказать шире об этом. Нам всем и Соединенным Штатам в том числе предстоит еще работать по дальнейшему улучшению, совершенствованию демократических процессов. Поэтому я хотел сказать, что у демократизации есть начало, но нет конца. Well, I actually wanted to uh, put it in a broader sense and saying that and say that uh, it's not just Kazakhstan, but even the United States has ways to go in um, uh, improving its uh, democratic processes. Um, as I believe, there is the start and the beginning of the process of building a democracy, but there is no end. Я думаю, что это вечное движение вперед. 
So I think it's an eternal movement for us. And the moment we are complacent, we say, okay, we now have built a complete democracy, that's when the recession and the regress, regress starts. Так что еще раз спасибо вам большое. Я очень вам благодарен за сегодняшнюю встречу. So again, thank you very much. I am very Надеюсь grateful на for дальнейшее доброе сотрудничество. Your uh, attention. I'm hopeful that we will have many more occasions uh, to come together and uh, talk. Спасибо. Thank you.